Hi, this is Ethan Kirsten from the Sunshine State, Florida. Today I have the honor to talk to Colonel Terry Vert. He's an astronaut, author, screenwriter, and a filmmaker. Hi, Terry, how you doing? I'm doing good, good to be with you, Ethan. So you ready to start the questions? Let's go, let's get into it. So um, when did you decide you wanted to become an astronaut and take a role in models? So my first book that I ever read, you know, from cover to cover was in like kindergarten and it was about space. It was one of those, uh, like a board book with one line per page and it was about Apollo and I was hooked. So growing up, I had pictures on my wall was covered with airplanes and galaxies and all that. I was hooked at a very young age. So what was your experience training to become an astronaut and what was like the most challenging part of it? You know, I love training. Training is actually in some ways better than the mission. So one of the things I loved about it is that it's something different every day because astronauts have to be doctors and pilots and mechanics and we have to make movies and do interviews. Um, and you have to be an accountant when the cargo ship comes up, you have to keep track of all the stuff and you have to do spacewalks. So every day it was something different. I had to learn lots of different things. I had to learn to speak Russian so, and spacewalks and all kinds of stuff. So the best part about training was doing something different every day. That's really interesting. So um, what was the most difficult part or challenge of being an astronaut? So going back to that, there's all kinds of different things you need to learn. And people always say, well, how long was your training? And the reality, it was a lifetime. I mean, I've been learning, ever since I was your age, I was learning and I love learning and I've been in training for my whole life. So that's tough, but probably the most specific tough thing was learning Russian. Um, I've got a bunch of my old Russian books are up on the shelf there. I thought I was pretty good at foreign languages. I minored in French in college, but man, Russian is difficult. So, and you have to speak it because I launched on a Russian Soyuz. And even once you're in space, there's a Russian segment. And so. Um, it took some time. There's like a big hill. Once you get over the hump, it was fun. Like I, all I want, I really wanted more and more Russian language, but getting to that point was tough. That seems hard because you have four languages and to learn another one, it's really hard. Cause I actually saw, um, on Google that it's really rare for someone to speak more than two languages. So that must be really hard. Sometimes in my brain would get confused and when I first started learning Russian, I spoke German, so I constantly had German words coming out when I was trying to speak in Russian. And then I got better in Russian, so now when I speak German, I'm always throwing out Russian words, so it's, I get them confused. They're in the same part of my brain. It's better to be your age, because young kids are much better at learning languages. Your neurons are still getting formed in your brain. So for all the kids out there watching, Man, learn a language, learn Spanish, learn French, learn Chinese, learn Russian, something. That now is the time to learn when you're young. Yeah, I'm actually learning Spanish now that I'm in middle school. I'm doing Spanish one. We win. <laughs> so besides being an astronaut, you're also an author, a screenwriter, and a filmmaker. So what inspired you to make a film named One More Orbit that comes out this month? Um, so photography and filmmaking, it's been my passion. When I was in space, I actually took more pictures than anybody, any other astronaut ever, over 300,000. Um, and the best thing I did during my seven months in space was help make an IMAX movie called A Beautiful Planet, which actually, if you got Hulu, you can watch IMAX and Disney are putting IMAX films on streaming now. So you can watch them at home. We're all stuck at home because of COVID, but you can see these IMAX films. And my director was a lady named Tony Myers, and she's amazing. Um, she's made all the space movies going back to the 80s and 70s. And um, she really inspired me and taught me how to be a filmmaker. And so last year, a buddy of mine had this crazy idea to set a world record flying around the planet. And he wanted me to be a pilot. And it was, it was I didn't have enough time to get the training. So he said, well, why don't you make a movie? And I was like, that's exactly what I want to do in life. So I had this big budget. We had over 200 people on the crew. Um, I had crews in five different places around the world. And so we made a documentary about trying to break a world record flying around the planet. It's called One More Orbit. It comes out in October. But it's, it's really about how exploration brings people together. Because we had 10 different people from 10 different countries on our airplane uh, during the mission. 
plus a big ground crew in Qatar in the Middle East that was um, like our mission control. So it, the real point of the film is about how, how people need to work together because the world seems to be going crazy nowadays. So I try to make a positive movie there. And it, we also talk about climate change. When we went over the North Pole, you could see a bunch of water, but not a lot of ice. And so I talk about how to solve climate, climate change in the movie too. That's really nice because you're making a film and also like help change. So I thought that was really nice of it. Yeah, it's fun. I, when it, it'll be out in, in now a few more weeks. So I'm excited. So you've written two books now, um, A Polio to the Moon and Back and How to Astronaut. An Insider Guide to Leaving Planet Earth coming out next month. So can you talk a little bit about your second book and what is the difference between them two? Sure. Actually, I, this is actually my third book. I, I did a National Geographic photography book called View From Above. I got it here. And then How to Astronaut is, is the latest one. So the first one was a photography book with stories, but the second one is a word book. So I wrote 51 short essays. Um, it just takes a few minutes to read each one and, and they're all supposed to be funny and they're supposed to make you say wow and laugh. Those are my two goals. And so it's everything that I could think of about different aspects of space flight. So some of the stuff you'd expect like um, how to train to do space shuttle emergencies or how to learn how to do medicine or how to do science experiments, kind of stuff you would think about. Spacewalking, how do you put a spacesuit on? And then some of the stuff is kind of unusual, like what do you do if your crewmate dies? What do you do with the dead body? Or if you're stuck in space, how do you get back to Earth? You know, if the rocket engine won't light up, um, how do you get to Mars? Are there aliens? And so I tried to make, you know, stuff you'd think of, stuff you wouldn't think of. And it's not technical, anybody can read it. Uh, you know, for kids there in middle school or whatever, you, it's, it's not a problem. Um, and hopefully you'll laugh and learn something along the way. I actually love that because that can encourage kids who are younger and want to be an astronaut. They can read off of that and be inspired. So I actually really love that. I hope so. And I, you know what I want to do also, Ethan? I want to make um, a video series about it uh, because there's all these interesting topics. So it'd be really cool to have like 10 minute segments. And I'm, you could do that for adults, but you could also do like a kid's, you know, like an educational thing. Like this is how you do rendezvous in space and make it a funny educational kind of thing. So I'm, that, that is one of my many projects that I have that I want to work on. So um, you've mentioned in your films uh, a bucket list and it's long. So what's left in your bucket list? Oh, lots and lots of things. I, I want to win an Oscar. <laughs> um, there's a lot of places I want to visit. I've still never been to the Bahamas. Actually, I just went to Bermuda last month. Um, for some business and uh, a buddy is talking about filming a series about uh, shipwrecks. So I went to Bermuda, but I've never been to the Bahamas. Um, so one of the TV show ideas I have is where I go visit the places that I saw from space. So it's like, here's this place from space. Now let's go see what it's really like on the ground. So I have lots and lots of places still to visit. So um, final question. My, uh, my favorite scene was when you stopped, I think, at Chile, one of your stops, and yes. one of the mechanics was on the bottom, and he was fixing it, and all the yeah. pee just came unfrozen, and it spilled on him. <laughs> so yeah. What would you say is yeah. your favorite part? Well, that was crazy, because we just flew over the South Pole, and it was really, really, really cold. It was July, which means it's wintertime in the Southern Hemisphere. And, you know, liquid water expands when it freezes. Most stuff shrinks when it freezes, but the reason we have life on Earth is because water is weird and it expands. And so the, the bathroom pipes, when they froze, they burst. And he had to go up in there and work on the engines because our oil was leaking because it was so cold. So while he was working on the engines, he got sprayed and he smelled so bad. Like I literally, I had to take ibuprofen. I was getting medicine because I was getting a headache. He stunk so bad and he had already cleaned himself up like three times, but yeah, we're still giving more. I was texting with him last night. It's been a year. We were just texting last night. Yeah, that was a funny, that was a funny scene. So, um, sadly, we're out of time. So it was an honor talking with you. And by the way, congratulations on breaking the world record for flying around in 46 hours and 40 minutes. Thank you very much, Ethan. This is a great interview. You do a great job. 
this is Ethan Preston signing off and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.